Good morning, friends. How are you guys today? Good. Do you know, do you know what this is? You don't? This is a kaleidoscope. Have you ever looked into an, a, a kaleidoscope before? When you look into it, it's got all these beautiful images that as you turn it, it changes. It's really cool. And when I was a child, when I used to look into the kaleidoscope, I would see all these beautiful images and shapes and I would want to capture one, just one, to keep it forever. But if you moved it ever so slightly, the image would change. I thought, how am I ever gonna get it back? So I'd spend hours and hours trying to turn it back and get it just right back to that same image and it would never work. It's kind of like life. Isn't life always changing? People change, the seasons change, we get a new teacher every year. Things are just always changing. Do you know that there's something in our life that doesn't change? Do you know what that might be? It's Jesus. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I want you to remember that because Jesus' love for us never changes. It's always the same, and we can always rely on him to be constant and consistent in the same in our lives. Okay, let's bow our heads in prayer and we'll go back to our parents. Our Father, thank you for the opportunity to come together and thank you for having a, a son that never changes, that's always the same, that we know we can count on. And give us grace this week. Help us remember to give grace to others just as you give to us. And we ask these things in your name and all the people say, Amen. And good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Some of you are probably happy today, others maybe not so. I wouldn't venture a guess as to why that might be. <clears throat> That's all I'm going to say about that. I would like to say to you this morning one thing. I, I would appreciate it if, if you all made a great effort to get your picture made or to send in a picture. Uh, you know, one of the things that I know about all of you is that there's over a thousand of you who are members of our church. Uh, and we want to get to know each other. Uh, some of us go to this service, some of us go to the later service, and it would be great if we all made a special effort to get our picture made. Along that lines, if you happen to see me out somewhere, uh, if you happen to see me at Kroger or at a restaurant or somewhere, and it appears that I don't know who you are, Please come and say, hi, I'm such and so, and I'm a member of your congregation. Because again, there are over a thousand of you who are members, and we're working hard, but every little bit of help that we can get is great, right? Let's go to the scripture this morning, and let's see what God has for us today. Our scripture comes to us from Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to be reading verses 7 through 14. And if you'd like to read along with me, you're welcome to. Or if you'd like to listen, that's great as well. As we read from Philippians chapter 3. I once thought all of these things in my life were valuable. But now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared to the infinite value of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. For his sake I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through my faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him 
sharing in his death so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me and for me this morning? Gracious God, we are so thankful for the opportunity once again to gather together as a community of faith, to come together to lift our hearts up to you in worship. We're thankful, Lord, for the way that your Holy Spirit has worked through our gathering thus far, and we pray, Lord, that your Spirit would continue to move among us. Lord, I pray that in the next few minutes that I might decrease in this place in order that Jesus Christ might increase. And I pray, Lord, that my words would be your words. And God, as always, we humbly ask that you would open our ears, open our minds, but most of all, dear God, open our hearts so that the words that you have for us today might be more than simply more information. Lord, we pray that you would instead let your words be transforming to us, that our hearts may be transformed from the inside out. And all this we ask in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we pray together, saying, Amen. We can have the first slide. I just want to review where we've been. You'll remember that the verse that we were looking at is, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which God has called you from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. And then the next one. What we see depends mainly on what we look for. You all know in the past several weeks we've talked about looking back. We've talked about looking around. Last week we talked about looking up. And today we're going to talk about looking forward. It's interesting the, the image that Paul uses in this passage from Philippians. It's an image of being in a race. It's an image of moving forward. It's an image of pressing on. That's the word that he used. I press on. Brothers and sisters, it's very important if you're in a race to keep running until the race is over. I want to share a little video clip with you of a runner who forgot that important thing. If we could have the video clip, please. My word for it, there's a moral to this story. Yeah, it looked like a coronation for Tanche Pepio. He's getting the crowd. He wants the crowd to cheer his performance. And at the end, he gets pipped. He gets pipped by Marin Simon of Washington. And you just can't do this kind of stuff, Lewis. You can. And you know, you see his face, and you know no one has to say anything. They don't have to explain it to him. He'll never make that mistake again. Hey, y'all cheer for me while I'm running because I'm about to win the race. What? It's fascinating, isn't it? You know, sometimes we think about our Christian life, our Christian walk, our our life with Christ, our walk in, in following Jesus. And we think that somehow, once we've accepted Jesus into our lives, once we've decided to be a follower of Jesus, that that's all we have to do. That the, the race is won, the race is over, that that's all God has for us. Paul reminds us today that that couldn't be farther from the truth. As long as we have breath, as long as we are in this life, we have work to do, we have things to do. We need to keep pressing on for the goal. You know, it fascinates me that Paul talks about how many things he had in his former life, how many things were important to him before he came 
to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. And it fascinates me that he says, now I think of these things as garbage. They're no more than garbage to me. And I think about how many times in, in my Christian life, and maybe it's this way it's for you in my, my walk with Jesus, that I get bogged down by the garbage. I get bogged down by the stuff that seems so important or it seems so heavy, or it seems like the race is never going to end. And all that I have is a sack of garbage to carry. And Paul reminds us that it's about looking forward. It's about pressing on. It's about carrying on to that goal. Now you see, one of the things that, that we know is we know the end of the story. We know the end of our story. We know how the story ends. The great writer C.S. Lewis said it this way, if we can have the next slide. There are far, far better things ahead than any that we leave behind. This is why we press on. This is why we keep going because we are going somewhere and we know the end of the story. If we could have the next slide. There's a great, great verse, several verses actually, in Revelation chapter 21. Now I know that Revelation is problematic for us sometimes. We read Revelation and we don't understand the imagery. We don't understand everything that goes on in Revelation. But if you read Revelation chapter 21... It's very, very easy to understand the vision that John's been given as he writes this. He says in the beginning of the chapter that, that I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Someday what we know is going to be gone and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And he goes on to say this, God's home is now among his people. God will wipe every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All of these things are gone forever. And isn't that a great thing to think about these things being gone forever? No more will we have to stand at the side of a casket and look into the face of one of our loved ones who's gone. No more will we carry sorrow crying. Man, I tell you what, if, if, if there's anybody that hates tears more than me, I don't know who it is because you heard of this term, ugly crier? Man, I'm an ugly crier. And when I start to cry, my voice jumps about two octaves like this. But it hurts to cry, doesn't it? And no more pain. All of these things are gone forever. You know, sometimes when I sit by the bedside of people that I love, whether they're church people, whether they're my mother who currently is in a nursing home and uh, doesn't have a great, great prognosis, I think about these verses and I think, we know the end of the story. We know the end of the story. And the end of the story is that someday all this, all this pain, all this suffering, all the garbage in our lives as Paul calls it, it, it's going to be gone. It's going to go away. It's going to disappear. And things are going to be different. Now, one response that we could have to understanding this, that, that someday it's going to be different, one response we could have to this is we could say, well, someday God's going to make it all better, so I just won't worry about it. I just won't think about it. God's going to take care of it, so I'm not going to worry about it. As a matter of fact, I might just sit down and take it easy because I'm tired of this garbage. Might just sit down because, after all, God's got it. And Paul says, don't do that. You got to keep pressing on. You got to keep going. You got to stand up. You got to let the garbage go and you got to keep moving forward. You got to keep 
pressing on. And it's fascinating the terms that, that he writes this in. It's not that I have already achieved this, he says. I've still got work to do. Boy, that rings true for me. Does it for you, brothers and sisters? Amen. I've got work to do. Because I've got work to do. I've got work to do. And I've got to keep pressing on. We've got to keep moving forward. And we can't be complacent. Otherwise, we might find that somebody crosses the finish line in front of us while we're trying to get people to congratulate us, right? It's all about looking ahead. It's all about looking forward. But you see, what I believe is that knowing the end of the story, knowing that God is going to work His purposes out, that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, knowing this ought to give us the confidence to keep going on. It should give us the impetus. It should give us the strength. It should give us the courage because we know we know where we're going. We know that no matter what happens, we know how the story ends. So let's run the race. Let's run the race. And let's keep pressing on. And let's keep moving forward. Because the truth is, as Will Rogers once said, if we could have the next slide, even if you're on the right track, you get run over if you just sit there. Right? You've got to keep moving forward. We've all got to keep moving forward. Because we're pressing on towards the goal. We're following Jesus. And we've got important things that we need to do. And we shouldn't let the garbage, we shouldn't let all the things in our life that might drag us down, we've got to let go of those things because you see, sometimes I know how we are because I'm that way. I think I trust in Jesus. I think I trust in Christ. But then just let the Dow Jones go down a whole bunch of points. And let me watch my 403B and my retirement plan go like this, and I'm going, do you trust in Jesus or do you trust in the Dow? You see, it's all about who we're going to put our faith in, who we're going to put our trust in, and who we're going to follow. And that's the real question, and that's the real importance, I think, for us to keep looking forward because Jesus is always walking forward. Jesus is always moving forward. Jesus is always in front of us, and we are always to follow. So brothers and sisters, today, as, as we conclude this series on, on what we're looking at, I, I hope that we will be people who always look ahead and who always press on no matter what. You know, there's always somebody that's going to be out there telling you that you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you don't have enough of this or enough of that, or you've got too much of this or too much of that, that you weren't built for this kind of race. And maybe in your darkest times when the garbage gets really heavy, you hear these words, a lot of nerve you got to even be in the race at all. Got a lot of nerve. I hear that just about every day, but especially on Sunday mornings. As soon as I wake up, the first voice I hear in my head is, you got a lot of nerve getting up in front of those people today. And you know what I say? Shut up. <laughs> I know the end of the story. And I'm going to keep pressing on. Even when the garbage piles up around me. I'm going to do what Paul said. I'm going to let it go. And I'm going to put my trust in the one, the only one, who is trustworthy. And I'm going to keep pressing on no matter what. And brothers and sisters, if there is any more important thing than perseverance 
think, keeping on, keeping on in, in, in our spiritual lives. I don't know what that might be. I don't know what it is because sometimes it's not about how fast you run. It's the fact that you keep moving forward. It's the fact that you keep looking forward. It's the fact that you trust that in the end, all will be well. All manner of things will be well. And that someday, there'll be a new heaven and a new earth for us to celebrate in. But until then, let's leave the garbage behind us. And let's keep moving forward. And let's keep our eyes on Jesus who is leading us into God's good future. And may we never become complacent. May we never sit down on the track so that we might not be run over. May we never get so enamored with ourselves that we do what that runner did and slow down and start to ask the crowd to cheer for us. (laughs) May we not be that way. May we be people who keep our eyes on the prize, who look forward always, and who keep on following Jesus no matter what. Amen.